I think the demoralizing thing for people is there's still a fair number of people in the community, we feel, that, that don't think this is real. If we can get them up to the floor, then we can open this bed up for another patient. Looks like it's the ER calling, so we can see what they need. Uh, we're doing pretty well. We've got about a 10% mortality rate uh, once somebody's admitted to the hospital, which is slightly better than the national average of 15%. So we're doing, uh, we're getting good at treating the people we can save. So our staff has been pretty healthy. I have lost one friend to COVID. He was a hospitalist at a different hospital where they weren't doing the protocols early on. He died back in January. So. The thing about working with this every day is it's no longer terrifying. I know early on in the surge, we didn't know what to expect. A lot of the staff was pretty upset. Uh, we had one uh, person who didn't want to come to work, uh, but now the people that are still here that haven't left have all experienced this. We've sort of had this grim determination that we know what we've, we've seen it before. Uh, we know this next surge isn't going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of work. Uh, we're probably going to lose a lot of patients. And I think uh, the staff is still that's here isn't no longer terrified at least. I think the demoralizing thing for people is. There's still a fair number of people in the community, we feel, that, that don't think this is real. Unfortunately, people have politicized this. People say that we're just making it up to make more money. And believe me, we're not making, making this up. We've lost, in the ICU, I believe around 75 patients in the ICU. Hospital-wide, probably close to 200. I'm just gonna move over here. Sure. <clears throat> or right here. We're going to intubate her. The patient's fine with that. We're going to have her call her family, at least talk to them one last time in case we can't get her off the vent. Our hopes is if we can get her stabilized, let her lungs rest and recover, we can get her out pretty quick. So She's trying to get a hold of her daughter right now uh, just to say goodbye. So, so another unplanned issue with having all these COVID patients is that takes up resources that could be used for other procedures that need to be done. And I have cardiac patients that need life-saving procedures have to be postponed so because there's no oh, place to put them in the ICU oh, or in the that's hospital. A good way for them. And that has been shown to affect mortality of these patients in the long term and in the short term. Um, at this time, it's really hard. Um, you know, we're we're a mostly COVID unit at this point, and it is very difficult and stressful. I'm trying to provide care for someone who has so much going on, and she needs us too. She needs us probably as much as anybody here, as anybody sick, that's sick here. And um, you know, sometimes the results are very, they're devastating. We're having a, a rough morning, we'll say. It's been a rough day. So we always do our best for every single patient no matter what they come here with and we are we're just seeing results that are that are tough to handle tough for any nurse tough for families and tough for just everything i think most all the staff would just want to tell the community that this is real this is happening you know make your own decisions as far as what to do about that but this is uh, unfortunately, from the street, you don't see any of this that's going on in the hospital.